The new Insomniac game called Fuse just came out today, and the guys over Insomniac were super awesome enough to get me an early review copy of the game, so I've been playing it through these past few weeks to get the review out day one for you guys. Fuse is a third person shooter, um, and you get like all these different powers. Well, you don't get a lot of different powers. Each character, there's four different characters, gets a certain power that they specialize in. I played through the majority, I really didn't dabble in the other characters that much, but I played through the majority as Dalton. He's the tank. Of course, that was my character. And he got this really cool mag shield. One of my favorite things about Fuse was that it's more of a co-op driven game than it is single player. You can play it through single player and you are going to have all four characters with you the whole time. And you can kind of jump between them to use their different powers any way you want. Or you can just stick through the whole game and play through as the one character. They each have their own skill tree, and like I said, they each have their own power. Or a weapon that has a special power. It definitely rewards people who do play it through cooperatively, though. So me and my friend Hayden play the game through together. And the way the co-op kind of, like, works is, of course, you can jump in between any character that's not being used by an actual person at any time throughout the game. But you need to use your powers, or you should use your powers together. So if I put my mag shield up and Hayden shoots through my shield, we both get the point for that kill. And that's really cool because you're not constantly fighting for the kills. Although at the end of each level, it does kind of give you a little, little rundown on your kills, who's got the most experience points, revives, and assists. I loved all of the co-op stuff. Loved it. I thought the co-op was a great design. I love that we get to share experience points. We can later level up, like team perks. So there's a skill tree, but there's also the team skills. And those are skills you can unlock by using fuse points. It's kind of like the currency to unlock bonuses for your whole team. You can have four of those active at any time. So you can get like one that gives you 5% extra more fuse credits when you pick that up or, you know, extra experience when you get those or team health. And then those also have separate tiers you can level up as well. I had a good time with fuse in the first few hours. But the game got extremely repetitive very quickly. Same enemies over and over again. Same wave of enemies over and over again. And they kind of kept things a little bit fresh by changing scenery. So it was really cool they changed the scenery, but it was all super generic scenery. You had your, of course, your standard cold snowy mountains. Your lush jungle. Your military bunker. And you even went to kind of like a bunker that was underwater. So it was all really kind of generic. I, I, it is the best way I can explain it. I don't even like using that word for this game because I thought the co-op stuff was so innovative. But then everything else in the game kind of fell apart. This is a little bit of a spoiler, I guess, but you did go to a space station at the end. And uh, it looked really bad. I mean, the graphics throughout the game weren't the best, but they definitely weren't the worst until you got to the space station. It just felt like they rushed through those levels so quickly some points of it actually look like the P a PS2 game. Just didn't look good at all. I really can't speak much about the story. The story lost me very, very early on. Very early on. It just was nothing I really was interested in. I did start watching the cutscenes. I was trying to pay attention to what's going on with the characters. But it just got convoluted and just kind of, I don't know, hard to follow because I wasn't interested. So Hayden and I made up our own story. At some point during the game, we got this huge like robot mech thing that followed us around. It was like this awesome killing machine. We named our robot Forcible Copulation Bot 2000. <laughs> Another small spoiler, but Forcible Copulation Bot 2000 ended up getting destroyed. We would make sure he did not die in vain and that everybody that had to do with the terrible corporation that killed him and took him away from us would die a terrible, terrible death. So that's kind of how our story went <laughs> for the rest of the game. As I was saying though, a lot of the game, especially the waves of the enemies and the enemies and the locations were very rinse and repeat, very, very just repetitive. And that goes also with many of the mini bosses and the bosses, extremely like boss fight 101, rinse and repeat, same thing over and over again, just different location. I don't know, because at the beginning of the game, I thought it was great. I loved it. I was having so much fun with it. But then when nothing changed, when it was just the same thing over and over again, I got bored really quickly. Overall, your other NPC characters weren't that bad. They did a lot to help. Um, one of the characters, I believe, Izzy, had this power that you would have to unlock because you'd go into the characters. They wouldn't auto-level up, and you'd level them up the way you wanted them to be. So we unlocked a power where she would throw like healing grenades almost. 
um, so she could revive us from a distance, and that was awesome. She was amazing with those. So the NPCs weren't super stupid. They didn't die a whole lot. Um, anytime I was down nine times out of ten, they somehow would become like indestructible, and they'd run through all this gunfire and were able to heal me without going down themselves. So I felt that the NPCs were pretty helpful. They, they definitely weren't stupid. I will give you a little disclaimer. We did not beat the final boss. Um, a few hours in last night when we were playing and we we're going to complete the boss and it was going to be great and whatever. We wanted the achievements. But the boss, the final boss level was everything you should not do in a final boss level. It was the most repetitive rinse and repeat boss level I've ever played. But the other thing that was really frustrating was you, the boss went through waves. First you would kill, like take down his shield, then you would drain his health, then something would happen, cutscene, his shield and health were back, drain his shield, kill his health, cutscene, all of that would be back. And you would go through three waves of that. I know, that's really boring, especially when his health does so, your weapons do so little damage, just like picking off health and just, okay, roll attack, dodge, shoot, 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 roll attack, Dodge, shoot, shoot, shoot. Try that for three freaking long waves. The worst part about it though, is if you died, even in the last wave, there was no auto save or checkpoint in between each wave. If you died all the way back to the beginning, to the very start of the boss fight, it was the most frustrating thing I've ever been through. Definitely, I'd say in this year of gaming, it was the most frustrating point part for me. I just, we couldn't do it. We lost our will to carry on. I wanted to have beaten it for you guys because I don't like reviewing games I haven't finished, but it was the final boss level and I had no idea what was going on in the story. So it's not like the ending was gonna play a big part into what was going on, for me at least. Uh, I just couldn't do it. I just, that boss bottle became a point to where I just didn't want to play anymore. And when a game stops being fun for me, that's when I know it's time to cut it off. Unfortunately, Fuse started off really, really well. It very much quickly became repetitive. It overstayed its welcome, and it's not a game that I will probably be playing again. I do know that Fuse does have kind of like a wave-based multiplayer part of it as well called Echelon, Echelon, something like that. I did dabble with that in a press event. Everything in the multiplayer section with the wave-based, I feel like I just played eight hours of that in the cam campaign with just change of map, same wave of enemies. So I really don't have an interest in pl playing the uh, multiplayer section. But if you're still curious about the game, I did put up a Rachel Plays of the first hour of Fuse, so make sure you check that out as well. So yeah, anyways, let me know in the comments what you guys thought of Fuse. If you're checking it out, if you're going to rent it, if you've already bought it, let me know. And as always, thanks for watching.